Color charts are extremely useful when it comes to painting. They take all the guesswork out of mixing your colors, and they allow you to precisely mix colors without wasting a lot of paint. Color charts are pretty simple. We'll start by choosing a tube of paint. We then paint that color in the upper left hand corner just as it comes out of the tube. Since the color we chose is cadmium yellow, this will be the cadmium yellow chart. Then you create a gradient in the first column by adding white and making useful steps until you get the lightest usable color. The first square in the next column is a mixture of our original color with another pure color paint, cadmium orange. Then this new color we've made is added to white until we have a good gradient to fill in the rest of the column. The third column will be the pure cadmium yellow paint mixed with a different pure color, in this case cadmium red. And we'll do this with all of our paints until we run out of pure colors. I like to organize my paints in order of the rainbow because it makes sense. These are the paints I used, but you can use whatever you have. You'll also need a palette knife. I started by taping off the sections using half inch masking tape I got at the craft store and using a ruler for spacing. I'm leaving a little bit of space in case I get more colors later. And then I labeled each column. So mixing the first gradient starts with the pure pigment. It's helpful to bite off a little bit up at the top so you can work with it down here. So then we add white. And I like to start by making the lightest hue. So we'll bite off a little pigment up here. Make sure you keep a clean palette knife. And you just need a hint of pigment because it doesn't take much. And basically what you're trying to do is come up with a color that just suggests this main color. Like you can barely tell the difference against the white. So that looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> then we start working this middle area. See if we can't make a hue that's somewhere in the middle. <clears throat> so I'd say that's pretty close to a mid-range. <clears throat> then we start just cutting these colors in half and trying to get useful hues that are in between these <clears throat> varied areas that we've made. That one's a hair lighter. Let's see if we can make one that's a little lighter here. And once you get used to this, um, it'll be a whole lot easier. This was really hard for me to do the first time. I had problems with the palette knife. Every time I mixed something, I'd come up with a muddy color. <clears throat> so don't give up, you'll get it. So there we go. Now we have uh, seven successfully distinct colors um, and we'll take our palette knife and fill those in on our color chart.
Now that we've got the first gradient, let's start mixing a color. This is cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. It's important to know that you don't mix an equal amount of each color because some pigments are stronger than others. You just want to mix until the new color seems between the original colors and most importantly is a color of its own. Just keep kneading and mixing it and when you're happy, make a new gradient just like you did in the first column. By the way, if you're using acrylic paint, make sure to use some slow drying medium so you don't spend the entire time fighting your paint. And while we're mixing colors, let's talk about mixing black. Black is made by mixing your primary color with its complement, that is, the color on the other side of the color wheel. For blue, this is orange. Now, you won't get a perfect black, and for some complements, you may get a brown, but you're bound to get at least one good black. It's helpful to scrape the pigment very thin so you can see if you notice one pigment over the other and make adjustments. You can also check to make sure you've actually made black by adding a little white to see if you get gray. Once you've finished filling in all your colors in your color gradients, hang your charts until your paint is tacky. Then carefully remove the tape while the paint is still tacky. If you wait until the paint is dry, it will chip. And once your paint fully dries, make sure you label your charts and you're done. So by now you've learned a lot about colors and you've got a reference for every possible color your paint will make. Until next time, keep creating.